Hi, welcome to the Juice Galaxy 0.1.21 devlog speedrun. Uh, this update, ugh, this this was another big update. It was supposed to be small. It ended up big. Uh, I worked on the inventory quite a bit. I really just wanted to add a right-click menu so that we could, um, you know, equip things more easily. Uh, ended up adding usable items instead, uh, such as the car, which is now a usable item. Nice and safe in here. And it's also hotkeyable, which is nice. I've set the hotkey to V, so I can just jump in and out whenever I want. And this way you can bring the car with you into dungeons, use it to fight bosses, which means that it's even more OP than it was before. I mean, you already could for some bosses, but now you can for every boss. Um, you could even theoretically beat the clog with it after a million years. Uh, so I will be making the car destructible in a soon update, and also adding a stunt system, because it, you need a way to heal the car, and I'm thinking you bash stuff, you take damage, then you do some stunts, and... Uh, that heals your car, and that'll be really cool. Um, we also have all these other usable items that I've added. These are special crafting juice types. Uh, uh, we got... So, there's the base stats on weapons. There's damage, knockback, mass, and scale. So I've created eight droplets for those. Um, positive and negative, like hard juice increases damage, this juice could kill someone, soft juice decreases damage, um, for knockback we have bouncy juice and squishy juice, uh, squishy things don't knock things back quite as far, obviously, obviously, uh, <laughs> we got heavy juice and light juice, and we got big juice and tiny juice, and we got, um, oh, Big juice and tiny juices for scale, heavy juice and light juices for mass. Um, and then we have a few different types of juice for other effects. Um, arcing juice adds electrical damage, searing juice adds fire damage, and uh, prismatic juice color shifts your item. So I'll demo those real quick. To use them, you just right click them and you get this nice little use on dot 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 menu. Uh, as opposed to, for the car, you just get a use, because you can't use it on stuff. Uh, you click use on, and then you can either hover over an item you already have equipped, or you can hover over your uh, something in your inventory. You just click, and shazam, you got a, a sweet looking mace. Uh, And, uh, yeah, now I got a, a bouncy mace, now I got a hard bouncy mace, and now it's tiny, and now it's a little bit bigger. Uh, you can also apply these mods to the car. I like applying a little bit of light juice to it, uh, because the I haven't really programmed it <laughs> to react quite yet, so, um, Decreasing the mass actually just makes it way faster, and uh, you can fly a lot easier. So that's fun. Enjoy that for now, because I'll probably be nerfing it a little bit. Uh, we will see. Um, yeah, and you can also apply uh, arcing juice and searing juice to things, and now you'll be able to see my car electrocutes things and lights them on fire uh, kinda hard to tell with these little guys cause they don't live very long but uh... he got electrocuted and lit on fire dragons have tons of health oh, that's a good demo hello yeah. got him uh, I also changed the prompt to Q for entering and exiting cars because it's a pick upable item now, so E is gonna pick it up instead of letting you inside. 
Uh, also, a quick note, added a little sound to uh, the grappling plunger when you fire it. Yeah, I actually rewrote the whole grappling plunger code, uh, so there were a couple bugs occurring with it. It shouldn't be buggy anymore. Oh god! Um, you can also apply stuff like searing and arcing juice to your armor, and now when you get hit, ah, it will electrocute things. Uh, another quick note is that uh, droplets. I was calling them droplets before I was calling them juice, so that's stuck in my head. Um, droplets have their own effects applied to them, so this searing juice, if I touch it, will light me on fire. Uh, I, I did that for, I mean, partially just for the lore of it, because, um, I mean, that is what this juice is. It's searing juice, so it should apply its own effects to things. Uh, but, uh, also I'm thinking in the future we might use this juice as ammo. I'm thinking about adding, um, a juice gun, or actually a bunch of different types of juice guns, and then you'll be able to set, like, hey, use this ammo in your juice gun, and, uh, then your ammo will light things on fire, and it gives you, um, a reason to, like, collect juice, and it also gives a reason for existence to some of the more useless juices, like soft juice. I just, why would you ever want that? Why would you apply that to something? Uh, uh, so, probably better to just shoot it at stuff, and maybe it doesn't do as much damage as the other juice, but you don't need it for anything else, so that's why you would do that. Uh... Juice applies with diminishing returns, because uh, obviously it would be OP to have it uh, apply linearly. So, uh, this juice, the quality level of it is 22. Um, so when you use it on stuff, I actually don't know what percentage that translates to. Uh, it should be about 20%. Um, let's apply it to... What juice is this? Oh, it's big juice. Uh, that's already 10% bigger, so if you apply it... Alright, so it's a bit more than 20%. Uh, man, this is hard to explain. Uh, the diminishing returns... I'll just Photoshop a freaking graph onto the screen here. Basically... Um, the cost to increase the effectivity of a stat by a hundred percent is one, but if you want to increase it by two hundred percent, it's going to be three, because it's going to be the cost of increasing it by one hundred percent plus the cost of increasing it by two hundred percent, and that'll be three. Um, you know what? Never mind. It's too complicated. Just look at the graph. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the diminishing returns, the idea is that each 100% that you want to climb is going to cost about as much as you've already spent. So you spend uh, one juice unit to climb 100%, and then two juice units to climb another 100%, and then three juice units to climb another 100%, up to 300%, which makes it seven juice units to, uh, to get to 300%. It's gonna be 15 juice units to get to 400%, 31 juice units to get to 500%, uh, 63 juice units to get to 600%, and that's really just two to the power of the level minus one, because it's all based on uh, log two X. And I might soften that up a little bit because uh, it really scales drastically. Um, here's a good demo. Um, Hogan scales that way now too, so it, it costs insane amounts of juice to scale your weapon. Uh, 
as it gets bigger. Oh, I shrank it. <laughs> I'm out of juice. Give me my juice. Uh, that's that's enough babbling about math for now. Um, there's no reason currently to not apply all of the juice you want to an item. Like right now, you can apply uh, searing juice, arcing juice, and hard juice to your weapon. Uh, but in the future, I'm thinking I'm gonna make it so that you have to choose one in some way. Like maybe there's a limitation on how much crafting juice you can apply to an item and that limitation will be based on the item level, like this level 1 Morningstar. Uh, you would only be able to apply like 10 juice to it, but a level 10 Morningstar, maybe you could apply 100 juice to it. Or uh, maybe item mods will conflict. I'm still thinking about that. Uh, yeah, that's about it for the inventory system. Uh, quick note, um, you can now drop stuff a lot faster by you just right click and then you hit D, D for drop. Uh, and I did that just because it was annoying to not be able to. Also, you can see here, um, heavy juice sinks to the ground while um, light juice is, uh, that's the light juice up there. Oh no, it's gone. <laughs> Uh, light juice flies upwards faster. Arcing juice, um, I already explained, will electrocute you. Heavy juice also has more mass than the rest of the juice because it applies to itself. Um, yeah, uh, let's check out the change log because there's a lot of small miscellaneous fixes as well. Um, right. Uh, I explained these things already changed um, I added a new juice material at some point I changed it to suck and I just now realized that it wasn't very pretty so I uh, I added a new juice material um, it's one of the it's the same type of material that all the other special juices use so it's it's a little more complicated than the eldest juice materials um, that were pretty before I messed them up. Uh, weapon mod scale based on log 2x. Grimoires can no longer spawn with the color shift mod, uh, just that makes them easier to recognize. Um, doll collision damage is less for dolls that are moving faster. Uh, this was already the case, but I actually changed it again so that it's now the doll that's moving faster in the direction of the collision like um, if so if you sideline like say two cars hit each other one car if you t-bone another car the car getting t-boned even if it's moving crazy fast uh, will take more damage because it's not moving quickly into the collision and uh, that's just that's not how physics work in real life, but that's how it's gonna work in Juice Galaxy because that's one of the only ways to determine like intention. Like if you're trying to ram something, if your intention is to do that, you're ready for it. You'll do more damage and you'll take less damage. Uh, yeah. Uh, inventory graphical improvements. Oh, I didn't mention, but uh, inventory items, I added like a little wobble to them to make them look just to make it cooler. Uh, you can now see the items from new angles. It just looks better. Uh, I changed the evil cellar lighting from blue and red Pepsi colors to purple and orange dank colors. Uh, so, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be working on the evil cabin, I mean the evil cellar, uh, pretty soon. The creator boss fight uh, definitely needs work. And I, I have a lot of really fun ideas that I want to apply to that. Uh, so look forward to that coming up pretty soon. Uh, fixes. I made it so that items are, uh, they ignore collision with your weapon 
and the monster they're spawning from right when they spawn, and that's to prevent them from getting yeeted off into the distance. So uh, you should lose items less. Uh, it's been really frustrating for people who fight like level 300 monsters for 10 minutes and then the item just <laughs> gets launched off into the distance. Um, the car no longer disables trigger volumes. Uh, I use trigger volumes to determine like when you're entering the wasp nest and at some point I disabled that behavior. So if you tried to drive the car into the wasp nest, it just wouldn't load and you'd enter the void instead and just fall forever. Um, improved Hogan walking physics. Uh, I made the Hogan walking physics be improved. And uh, grappling plunger. I think I already mentioned I rewrote the code for that to fix a couple bugs. Yeah. Um... So yeah, uh, the next update I'm planning on, I mean, no promises, because I might get distracted, but I want to work on the creator boss fight, uh, and make it a lot better. Jeez, shut up. And, uh, I have some ideas for NPC changes, like, uh, giving them idle chat, like, uh, if you come right up to them, they're like, Why are you staring at me, bro? Or broette. Uh, whatever the player is. Or if they have, like, a quest for you, they could, like, just mention it when you're walking by. Like, hey, you want a car? I know where you could get a car, dog. Uh, Etc. Uh, and that would just make them more alive. Like, Ingot could be over here complaining that his feet hurt because he's just been standing there. Uh, when you walk through towns, people could be like, it's Chicken Chaser, and all that stuff. Uh, and considering working on the map pretty soon, the map update, uh, I realized I've been thinking a lot about making the game loop better, uh, and I think if we have a map, it'll allow players to set goals because they could look at unexplored areas and be like, oh, I should go check that out, see if there's a thing over there, like an evil cabin or something. Um, and also it would allow them to set waypoints, like, oh, I know there's a town somewhere over there, but I'll get lost if I just fly in that direction, so let's set a waypoint and try to get there. And also maybe add a autopilot function that just allows just makes the player fly in that direction, uh, which like maybe they get killed on the way, but it allows you to just sit back for a bit instead of tediously having to navigate all the way over there as in um, some other games. So yeah, uh, those are just some ideas for future updates. Uh, probably gonna be working on the evil seller. Uh, I figured out a new method of level design that I'm really excited about. I'll probably share a video on the method, but TLDR, um, I'm just making maps in Sauerbraten, which is a really cool old game with a really nice map editor, and then modifying them in Blender. Oh, also I made it so that the ball and chain has a normal spawn rate again, because it's really not that big a deal if it spawns in the wild. It doesn't lag the game as much as I thought it would. Uh, yeah, uh, let's call it here. Uh, next update surely will be out uh, so soon. I'm definitely not gonna fall down some rabbit hole and start programming some crazy thing that takes up all of my time. Uh, definitely not gonna do that for sure it's gonna be out really soon so look forward to that and uh, have a good week or month peace